Hello, in this video we're going to do general equilibrium under uncertainty. We'll be solving for the Walrasian equilibrium. We're going to have two consumers. Consumer A has the following utility function. Utility is equal to the natural log of good x. The consumer's endowment, well we're dealing with uncertainty here, so in state 1 which occurs with a 50% probability, consumer 1's endowment of good X will be 0. State 2, which has a 50% probability of occurring, consumer A's endowment will equal 10 units of good X. Consumer B, same looking utility function. The endowment, there is a 50% probability that consumer B will have 20 units of good X. And in state 2, there's a 50% probability that consumer B will have 10 units of good X. So let's start with consumer A. So let's form the budget constraint. M, money income, equals the price of good X in state 1, multiplied by the units of good X in state 1, plus the price of good X in state 2, multiplied by the units of good x in state 2. Where the consumer's income is going to be the price in state 1 multiplied by the consumer's initial endowment of good x, which is 0, plus the price in state 2 multiplied by the consumer's initial endowment of good x in state 2. So setting these two things equal, we have the consumer's budget constraint. And we can simplify the left-hand side a little bit we have the following. This is going to be an expected utility maximizer. So there is a 50% chance that state 1 will occur. So that's where their 0.5 is coming from. And there's a 50% chance that state 2 will occur. So that's where that 0.5 is coming from. So the two probabilities sum the 1. Now we're going to maximize uh, utility subject to the constraint. So here is our objective function here, expected utility, and here is our constraint. And we're going to take a partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good x in state 1. This is all for consumer A here. And we get back the following result. And now taking a partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good x, but now in state 2, we get this result. And one more for partial derivative, partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to lambda, we just get back the constraint. Okay, rewriting that first partial derivative result, we're going to solve that for lambda. And we get the following. Our second partial derivative result, we're also going to solve that for lambda. And we get the following. We're going to set lambda equal to lambda. So I do that right here and I solve for good x in state 2, we have this result. I'm now going to plug this result into the budget constraint. So consumer A's budget, cons consumer A's budget constraint is as follows. And now we're going to make a substitution. So making that substitution for good x in state 2. And now simplifying. I'm going to solve this for good x in state 1. We get the following result. So this is the demand for good x in state 1. The demand for good x in state 2, we're taking take this result here, we're going to take the demand in state 1 and plug it into this expression on top. So I make that substitution down below. And so the demand for good x in state 2 for consumer A is 5. Now let's move on to consumer B. So consumer B, just recall the utility function and then the probabilities of each state occurring and the endowments in those states. Forming the budget constraint. So as before, uh, M is going to represent 20, the quantity of good X in state 1 multiplied by the price in state 1 plus the price in state 2 times the endowment in state 2. So setting these two equations equal, 
And simplifying a little bit, we have consumer B's budget constraint. Consumer B is also an expected utility maximizer. Setting up the Lagrangian and taking now three partial derivatives, setting those all equal to zero. So this is very similar now to what we've already done with consumer A. Set both of these first two equations equal to lambda and then set lambda equal to lambda like we did before. So taking that first partial derivative result and solving for lambda. Taking that second partial derivative result for consumer B and solving for lambda. And setting lambda equal to lambda. And we're going to solve for good x in state 2 for consumer B. And we're going to plug this result into consumer B's budget constraint. Making that substitution. And simplifying, we get the demand for good x in state 1 for consumer B. And the demand for good x in state 2 for consumer B. Just take this result right here and plug it in on top for x1 subscript B making that substitution, we get the following demand in state two. All right, so let's get consumer A and consumer B's demands for good X in state one. And now let's form the aggregate demand in state one. So adding up each consumer's demand Recognizing the endowment for our consumer 1, consumer A in state 1 is 0. The endowment for consumer B in state 1 is 20. So making those changes on the left-hand side. Simplifying here a little bit. And now let's normalize one of the prices to equal 1. Doesn't matter which one. I'm going to just normalize the state 1 price equal to 1. Making that substitution and solving for the price in state 2, price of state 2 will also equal 1. So we got our Walrasian prices. And now let's evaluate consumer A's demand in state 1 by plugging in our Walrasian prices. And we see here consumer A in state 1 will get 5 units. And consumer B in state 1 will have 15 units. We already saw for consumer A's demand in state two, it was just constant at five. And here's consumer B's demand in state two. Evaluating that at our wall raising prices, we see it'll be 15. So that's it. Hope you found this video helpful.